Hello YouTube! Okay, so today I'm going to be putting together a seamless surface design pattern. So it's a pattern that's going to tile. And I'm going to be putting it together using a program called GIMP. I've already drawn the various component pieces of this pattern in Paint Tool Sci, which is my usual program. But Sci doesn't really have the tools for doing repeat patterns, whereas GIMP does, so I'm just going to be switching over. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, GIMP is a free and open source art program that's sort of built as a Photoshop alternative. I don't find it as intuitive to use as Photoshop, but it does have a pretty wide range of tools available, and it is completely free, which is a big bonus if you're a starving artist. So the two main features of GIMP that I'm going to be using a lot today are the tile function, which you can find under the filters menu, under the map submenu and the offset layer function, which you can find under the transform submenu in the layer menu. So the first thing I did to create this quick background was I picked a canvas size, which is 20 inches, and then I made a very quick one inch little square on a separate canvas, and then I just used the tiling function to map it out to 20 inches to make that my background. And once that was in place, I just was kind of eyeballing what size my, component needed, my components needed to be, and then I'm just placing them down kind of randomly here. So today I'm making what's called a toss pattern, which basically means that all my pieces are scattered really randomly, and so there's no particular order to them. And if you've ever tried making something that looks random, you know it's a lot harder than it looks. So that's part of why I'm rotating the canvas between every piece I put down, as opposed to just rotating the pieces. It helps me get a more fresh perspective of exactly what I'm looking at, so I stop trying to sort of accidentally make patterns. I'm also using the offset function pretty regularly, which is serving two purposes. Uh, basically what offset does is it cuts up the canvas and puts it back together in a new way. So you can imagine it kind of chopping off the left half and then sticking it to the right edge, and then chopping off the top half and placing it against the bottom edge. So basically using offset both helps me get a fresh look at things, like rotating the canvas, and it also makes sure that I don't leave gaps around the edge without me having to manually break up my pieces and kind of finesse them into place. So honestly, I'm still pretty new to pattern making, and I'm just kind of figuring out what works. So if you're trying it out for yourself, I definitely recommend just playing around and fiddling with the canvas at first. Sometimes, if I'm not sure I like how something's turning out, I'll definitely go ahead and just tile it and GIMP quickly to test, so then I can see if there's any weird spaces or pattern gaps that I just can't see when it's on its own as a single tile. Uh, the other tip I recommend for surface design is definitely always place down your big pieces first. So here in this piece, I've got all the monsters into place. And then I've added the slightly smaller weapon pieces, and then I've saved the gems, the potion, and finally the gold coins for last. So I can just kind of use those to fill in the little gaps in the pattern. And I can tell you from experience that that's much easier than having the little stuff already in place and then trying to fill the big stuff in after the fact. You also may have noticed that I tend to place things, all my elements down in sets of four. Uh, that's not a hard rule or anything, or something that I picked up somewhere. I just find it's the easiest to do one of each element uh, at every sort of 90 degrees of rotation. I think it helps keep things a little bit balanced because there's always something facing every direction, and it makes sure I'm not overfilling it with one element and then not leaving any space for my other elements. And it just sort of... Uh, helps give me a quick rule to make sure that things are roughly balanced across the canvas without worrying too much. So once everything is finally in place, I will always tile the pattern and then just try and stare at it from a distance and just sort of see if anything catches my eye. There's almost always at least a few little tweaks that I can still make or some gaps that I've missed, and figuring out where those are and fixing them really does seem to help make the whole thing look a bit more polished. Uh, the hard part is usually finding out where those spaces are on the tiling canvas, because you can get pretty disoriented when the thing is tiled and you can't see any of the edges anymore. So I try to navigate just by all the other pieces surrounding the problem area. And honestly, if I lose track of what I'm trying to fix, which I do sometimes, then that probably means that it wasn't as much of a problem as I thought it was if I can't even find it again. So I think that's about it for this piece. 
Um, I put most of my surface designs up on Redbubble, where I can print repeating patterns onto a bunch of different home deck stuff and accessories and clothing items. So I will have a link down below for where you can find this over there. Uh, I'm also pretty happy with how this turned out, so I'm planning to do a test print of it on Spoonflower, where I can print off a uh, custom one-of-a-kind fabric on a variety of different fabric types. But they do require a test printing, which I do in batches, so that'll probably take place over the next couple of months, and then you'll be able to buy this as fabric. Uh, if you guys really like seeing me draw repeating pattern work like this, or if you found it helpful, please definitely let me know in the comments down below, because this is something I do sometimes, and it's really nice to know which of my videos are actually interesting to you guys, and uh, which ones I should uh, focus less on. Uh, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I really hope I'll see you in the next video.